Now, AdCorp uh, has announced a strategic partnership with the Singapore-based uh, APBA uh, in South Africa. We always abbreviate these things into acronyms like APPA. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bank, one of our banks. Richard Pike, the chief executive of AdCorp. There's another abbreviation for you, joins us now for more. Hello, Richard. Hi. So, the Singapore... Uh, Singapore grip that you've taken, uh, why? What are you doing? Um, our strategy with regard to where we wanted to play as a group it evolved probably in about 2011 and we decided that Africa and the Asia Pacific regions were the areas that, uh, that we saw our, our, ourselves playing a, a particular role. Uh, we've made a number of acquisitions in Australia, in fact we announced another one in the oil and gas space uh, just over two weeks ago mm. called DARE which is a 30 million dollar acquisition. And uh, we opened an office in Singapore in October of last year, and we've resourced that, that office. And what the plan is, is to put all of our non-South African assets, which is about 11 African countries. We have an investment in India. We have now three businesses in Australia. And now uh, we've entered into this relationship that we'll talk about now, this APBA relationship. Put those under the Singapore entity and look to potentially take that to a listing uh, in the Asia-Pacific region in, in the sort of 2018 type of time frame with a view to actually raising capital in that market, so collateralizing all these assets, raising capital to further expand in what we think is a very exciting geography. The APBA asset, um, we've got an irrevocable uh, option that we can exercise in three years to buy into the equity of it, and in exchange for that, we're helping them fund and, and strategize a lot of their, their growth. But what it does, it gets us into a core market. It's Singapore-based, but it's got offices in Singapore, it's got offices in China, it's got offices in Hong Kong, and in Japan, and that's the center of the Asian universe from a staffing point of view. No. So a good, an exciting opportunity. Richard, exciting times indeed. Now with that geographic spend, uh, spread, rather, we're seeing Asia, you've made a mention of the DARE uh, investment in Australia, yeah. of course, and you still have Africa and South Africa. How does this change the balance of the company in terms of uh, the weightage of revenue streams? Where are you going to be making the most money? Yeah, so at the moment, um, the, the core of the business is still South Africa. About 60% of our profit is derived from Africa. It's probably better to talk profit than revenue mm -hmm. because our margins are all different from different parts. So 40% is non-South uh, Af uh, non Africa at the moment. And we see that balance tipping to the extent that we want to end up somewhere around about a third Africa, a third Asia, and a third Australia. That's where we're working towards. And, uh, and that will Im imply some more acquisitions in the Asia-Pac space, mm. and, uh, and particularly in the, the Asia space, which is uh, statistically where 52% of the world's population are going to work in, in 2030. So if you're not in that market, uh, you can't call yourself a serious player in, in staffing. Wayne, uh, yeah. it, you think of it as a South African company, but it's no, not. No, 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 it's certainly expanding. Richard, a little bit, a little bit outside of AdCorp now, how do you see the labor situation in South Africa developing, specifically now with what we're seeing in Kusatu? Do you yeah. think we're going to have a tough year? Wayne, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, I must tell you, by, <laughs> by, by trade, but I'm really worried about what I see. First of all, you've got a sluggish economy, so that doesn't help employment. Then you've got this jockeying, as you mentioned, you're seeing the split in Kasatu. And the way that um, the trade unions typically mobilize members is through militancy. And yes. so I think we're going to see uh, an increase in that. And then you overlay this new labor legislation that's now coming in January. And what we're seeing in our client base is, is just absolute confusion. No one knows how to deal with it. They've kind of woken up at the 11th hour and trying to grapple with this. And, and we're seeing it costing jobs. It's definitely costing jobs. And it's costing a lot of jobs in this economy. So, so I think if you, if you take those three factors in combination, it's not a happy scene overall from an employment perspective, and there's nothing that I see on the horizon that's going to change that situation anytime soon. Richard, going back to the Singapore, and it's related in a way to what you've just said and what Wayne has asked, is the environment in a place like Singapore. On the one hand, very free market. They built yeah. this, uh, Lee Kuan Yew died a couple of weeks ago, built this island into this massive economy. On the other hand, quite tough with government intervention in certain ways. So for a company like yours, how does the air smell in Singapore? <laughs> well, it, it's quite, it's been quite, quite a, a revelation. Um, in terms of the competitiveness report, Singapore ranks as the easiest place in the world to do business. Yeah. And what is fascinating is when we set up last year, I got a call from the, uh, what they call the IE, the people that promote inward investment, and they came to see me, and they probably spent two hours with me, and said, what can we do with you, uh, for you? How can we help you? I then got a call from the, the delegates in, in, in South Africa and said, our guys came to see you. Is there anything that we could do uh, you know, on top of? Were you happy with the support you got? And, and you know, it's amazing just how welcomed you, you're made to feel. They can't do enough to welcome you into that environment. And I kind of think in, in, in our situation here, yeah, we're doing everything to repel people. 
Mm. Let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, take a couple of steps back to uh, the the merger with Kelly. Has the dust settled? Are you settled? Are you finding your feet? How is that partnership? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, out? The dust hasn't settled yet. Uh, we've got a program in place to integrate the business of Kelly into our organisation. So our strategy, typically, when we acquire businesses, we acquire uh, businesses that that are, are successful, strong management teams, strong brands, and and strong positioning. And we typically leave their, their inherent DNA alone and, and, and try and enable them. Kelly's been a little bit different in that we're integrating a lot of their operations into existing operations here because of the overlap. And uh, we've got a project plan that will culminate in August of this year. So the dust will finally settle in, in August. But it's positive and it's, and it's great. And I think it's a really good opportunity. And uh, you know, if I look at our positioning now, we span all the areas of the market that we need to be in in the South African environment. Uh, we're very strong in the skills base. and. Uh, well, you know, I mentioned earlier, I'm quite negative about overall employment prospects in South Africa. I think our positioning in South Africa is very good and our opportunity to take market share mm. is very good. Well, that's been a very exciting yeah. conversation. Uh, uh, ease of doing business in Singapore, again, another one to highlight. Number one in the world, David. Why do we make it so difficult here to do business? And it, as I say, a South African company that's actually not South African anymore. Well, not, be, not staying South African yeah. anymore. Very big thank you uh, to uh, Richard Pike. He is, of course, the chief executive at Atcorp, talking all things from uh, their breakthrough in Singapore as well as the labor situation in South Africa.